Hi there. In this video, I again wanted to talk about interpretation of regression results, but in the context of log models. So remember from the last video, what we looked at as we looked at the interpretation of individual coefficients in some sort of regression, y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times some variable x1 plus beta 2 times x2, sort of continuing all the way up to sort of beta p times xp. And we talked about these individual betas as representing the marginal effect of that particular variable on the dependent variable. So it shows what is the sort of marginal partial effect of that variable, importantly, actually. So it says if x1 was to increase by one unit, assuming all my other variables are constant, then what happens to my dependent variable? Okay, so that was the case where we sort of had a, a wholly linear model. What happens if instead I regress sort of log y on sort of the logs of my independent variables? So I sort of have beta 1 times a log of x1 plus beta 2 times log of x2. Yeah, sort of continuing all the way up to beta p times log of xp. Well, what do the individual beta coefficients here actually mean? Well, I guess you can still think about them in the same terms as you, we sort of thought about the linear regression. But in this circumstance, it doesn't quite mean exactly the same. In this context, it says, well, if log x1 increased by one unit, what would be the corresponding increase in log y? Okay, that's quite a clunky description about what's going on, and it doesn't really tell us anything. In fact, if we go through and we sort of differentiate, or we, we find the differential of uh, both sides, then we find that dy over y is equal to beta 1 times dx1 over x1. So I'm sort of assuming that all the other variables are constant. The only thing we're varying is x1. Then if we sort of differentiate logs, we always get sort of 1 over that variable. So that's why we've got the sort of dy divided by y equals beta 1 times dx1 over x1. So if we rearrange this, then we get an expression for beta 1, which is that beta 1 is equal to x1 over y times dy over dx1. And what does this actually mean? Does this have any sort of significance? Well, it does in economics. Perhaps if I write it a slightly different way, it would become more apparent. I can write this as the change in y divided by y divided by the change in x1 divided by x1. Which, in a sense, the top thing is actually just the percentage change in y, and the bottom is just the percentage change in x1. So, actually, what beta 1 represents in this sort of log model is it represents elasticities. So, in particular, it shows what is the sort of partial elasticity of my dependent variable with respect to that particular independent variable. So assuming that all the other variables were constant, what would be the percentage increase in my dependent variable from a 1% increase in that variable in question? Okay, so that's the example where I've got sort of both my independent and my dependent variable being logged. What happens if I just have, let's say, my dependent variable? So I've got log y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times x1 plus da da da. Yeah, in this context, what does beta 1 represent here? Well, you can still think about it in percentage terms, although beta 1 shows here what is the percentage increase in y from a one unit increase in x1. So because we haven't logged x1, we're talking about sort of what is the effect of a level change in x1 in percentage terms on y. So that's the case if I have a log dependent variable. If I have a non-log dependent variable and I have a sort of logged independent variable, what does beta 1 now represent? Well, beta 1 represents in this context, well, beta 1 represents the increase in y in terms of its units that would be associated with a 1% increase in x1. So when you sort of think about it in this terms, it becomes quite clear why we sort of have these benefits from doing a sort of log-log model. Well, one of the benefits is that because it sort of makes all of our and variables on the same scale. They're all in percentage terms. We don't have to worry about units. So that's quite a nice thing. 
And it actually means that our coefficients can sort of almost be directly compared with one another, which is also another nice property to have when we're sort of looking between different regression models.